Hey, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. We want to welcome you to Ringled United Methodist Church online. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, make sure to like the post, go ahead and comment, be active this morning as we are doing church together online. You might want to even start your own watch party if you're viewing this by Facebook, and that way you can invite others to join you as well. Um, we're so glad you're here this morning. Now, we're going to be talking about giving up expectations. This was part of our uh, Lent series anyway, but it's really appropriate for this week as we think about all the things that we're expecting to happen that, that aren't happening and may have to change. Where's our faith at? and all that. How can God speak a word to us today in these very un uncertain times, a word that will help us to be deeply rooted and more sure of the presence of God? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Today, I'm glad you're with us. Uh, listen, uh, you can give anytime. I just want to remind you about that. Go to our website, ringledumc.org. You can give that way. Of course, if you want to mail in your offering or your tithe, P.O. Box 99 right here in Ringgold, we appreciate it so much for you to take that extra step to do those things, especially those of you that this past week gave online for the first time. Thank you for doing that. That was really amazing, and I super appreciate you doing so. We're going to try to stay connected. You try to stay connected. Uh, our children's ministry did an amazing thing this past week. If you uh, were able to participate in that uh, study group there on Wednesday or, or whenever you happen to watch it. And, uh, you know, we've done some other videos. Uh, we did NCIC this week still. We had an uh, extra food uh, giveaway on Friday. Coming up, we're going to have a blood drive, which is the most important thing that we can do as a community right now for those of us that could participate in something like that. And, and so stay connected. We're going to work really hard to stay connected with you. Uh, it's uh, a different way of being right now, uh, but it's not going to last forever. So let's just keep on and keep hold on together. Right now, thank you. We're ready. It's time for worship online. Ringled United Methodist Church. Let's get to it. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. Will you join me now in prayer? O oh, merciful Father, in compassion for your sinful children, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Savior of the world. Grant us grace to feel and to lament our share of evil, that made it necessary for him to suffer and to die for our salvation. Help us by self-denial, prayer, and meditation to prepare our hearts for deeper penitence and a better life, and give us a true longing to be free from sin through the deliverance won by Jesus Christ our Redeemer. Amen. Tenderly Jesus is calling, 
calling, O sinner, come home. Oh, for the wonderful love he has promised, promised for you and for me. Though we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home, you who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling. Will you join me at this time as we affirm our faith together by reciting the Apostles' Creed? And I would invite you to say this out loud wherever you are, maybe in your living room, or if you're in a place where you can't speak out loud, would you just read along with me and confirm our faith together? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, who throughout these forty days for us did fast and pray, teach us with thee to mourn our sins and close by thee to stay. As thou with Satan did contend and did the victory win, oh, give us strength in thee to fight, in thee to conquer sin. As thou didst hunger, bear, and thirst, so teach us, gracious Lord, to die to self and chiefly live by thy most holy word. And through these days of penitence and thy passion tied, yea, evermore in life and death, Jesus with us abide. Abide with us that so this life of suffering overpassed, and Easter of unending joy we may attain at last. Normally in traditional worship at this time, we have an opportunity that we call the passing of the peace. Since we are not able to be gathered here in person and pass the peace through handshakes or smiles, what we'd like to encourage you to do at this time is to pass the peace by texting someone, and so we would call that texting the peace, or by maybe writing a card to someone, and so you can write the peace to someone. Take about a minute, if you would, as an act of worship, 
and pass the peace of Christ. Our scripture reading for today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, verses 20 through 21, and verses 31 through 35. Will you join me? One time, Jesus entered a house, and the crowds began to gather again. Soon, he and his disciples couldn't even find time to eat. When his family heard what was happening, they tried to take him away. He's out of his mind, they said. Then Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him. They stood outside and sent word for him to come out and talk with them. There was a crowd sitting around Jesus, and someone said, Your mother and your brothers are outside asking for you. Jesus replied, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Then he looked at those around him and said, Look, these are my mother and brothers. Anyone who does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, again, I want to say good morning to each and every one of you that are watching, uh, or uh, good whatever part of the day it is when you happen to be reviewing this, if it's not Sunday morning. I'm grateful that you're taking the time. I'm Chris Bryant, the senior pastor here, and interestingly enough, we started uh, Lent this year, which is the 40 days prior to Easter, uh, by asking if we couldn't see Lent differently. Uh, we're trying to, to, to speak this theme into our entire year with living in a time where the year is 2020. We're asking guys to open, God to open the eyes of our heart and our mind and to see everything differently. And, and this year, uh, coincidentally, I was asking for folks to take uh, a look at Lent differently and perhaps see God more fully or more deeply uh, through this period. And, and as it turns out, we, we have to look at Lent differently. Everything's been changing. And, you know, just kind of on a side uh, the other day, you know, one of the, the practices of Lent is uh, saying the Lord's Prayer, and we haven't really talked about that this particular year, but somebody mentioned to me, and I thought this was a great idea, and I'd just bring it up at the beginning of the sermon today, that you know as you wash your hands, everybody's been talking about, you know, you got to make sure to wash your hands frequently, and, and that they say about 20 seconds it, it takes to make sure you've washed your hands uh, thoroughly. That's about the time it takes to say the Lord's Prayer. And, you know, uh, Lent practices of saying the Lord's Prayer often were morning, noon, and night. Uh, it's been my practice for a long time now to try to say the Lord's Prayer at noon uh, during Lent. 
Uh, but maybe, maybe that's a way for you to combine some of what's happening here uh, with uh, the spirituality of this season. Every time you, pr- uh, you wash your hands, or, or maybe most of the times you wash your hands, you just pause and you, you, you say the Lord's Prayer, and you remember that God is with you. And uh, those words, I know, will, be a minist- uh, will minister to you and to your soul as you do that. I hope you're still reading through the gospel according to Mark with us. You got some time. You probably got some extra time now. Maybe you don't, but, but I'm guessing you do. And if you haven't, you can still jump in. We're only like in chapter 10. Uh, there's 16 chapters to Mark. It's the shortest gospel. You can catch up if you haven't, uh, haven't started. Uh, read at your own pace. It's fine. It's a great time. And I'm going to mention to this uh, later in the sermon, but to feel the Spirit and to recognize the Spirit in your life, you have to know the words and actions of Jesus because the Spirit... Uh, we recognize a spirit because it reminds us, it feels like Jesus in us speaking to us, and, and, and we recognize that by studying the words and the life of Jesus uh, as witnessed to in the four gospel accounts. And in this case, Ringled Methodist Church, we're ringing, reading through Mark's account together. So I thought I would encourage you that. Remember, also at the beginning of Lent, I had said, hey, pick a new spiritual habit, you know, for in the next 40 days. Uh, a new habit or, or one that you, if it's not new, one that you just want to practice maybe personally or, or one for your family. And uh, really try to drive it home in the next 40 days. Isn't it interesting that we're in a situation now where we really have maybe a greater chance than ever, especially with those spiritual practices that maybe we'd like to do with our family. It's always been a great idea, but we just never really had the opportunity. We're so busy. We're all the time going everywhere and, and have so much to do. Well, that's not the case right now. We're, we're being told stay at home and, and self-isolate, this sort of thing. And, and so what a wonderful opportunity to, to think about some of those family spiritual practices or individual spiritual practices that otherwise you would be too much on the run to do, but you don't have that excuse, do, do you? We, we don't have that excuse right now, so think about that. Uh, of course, uh, Lent's always a good time to think about tithing uh, and the challenge of giving 10%. I want to encourage you that, even as we think about those that are being affected right now uh, in the economy, and I'm, I'm praying for the folks that are right now facing unemployment that frankly didn't expect to be. Uh, and so when I, in, I, in my giving, I'm thinking about them, and I'm also brainstorming and praying about how this church might be able to help those affected in this way uh, in the next few weeks uh, and months. All right, lastly, I just mentioned this, community. You know, in the church, when we talk about Lent, we're always thinking about community, and how do you do this right now? And, and I heard the other day that um, in Milan, Italy, you know, Italy is like nine or ten days ahead of us uh, in f- uh, facing this coronavirus and some of what they're going through. And, and I heard the other day that in Milan, Italy, at six o'clock every evening, people are going outside their homes, out on their ba- balconies, and, and they're, they're clapping, they're, they're, start, they're, they're just start, they're, they're clapping together, and at some point they begin to sing their national anthem or, or someone starts some other song, and it's a wonderful time of community, and I'm just, I thought I would plant the seed. I don't know if we can do this or not, but what if Ringled Methodist Church, if we started a, some sort of a viral word, a good viral word uh, of maybe at six o'clock going out on your porch and, and waving at your neighbors, or maybe we start clapping, but I wonder if we can be salt and light in that way. I'm, it's just a thought. Begin praying and think about that. I'm going to talk to our staff about it. Maybe that's a, a neat way for us to spread some community in the weeks ahead. I'm, I'm really praying that God would open our eyes and minds as expectations have changed, but what new God possibilities are there for us? And that's really what I want to focus on the rest of our sermon today. Uh, again, we're returning to our theme of giving up things that matter. And, and it's, it's a bit ironic, or maybe it's just the sovereignty of God, because uh, we originally planned to talk about giving up, uh, giving up expectations today. Uh, and, but I had really forgotten about that, to be honest with you. I had been thinking about, you know, as the shepherd of this congregation and where to lead the congregation, what, what do we need to talk about this week? How do we best respond to what we're going through? And the thought occurred to me on Wednesday that we really need to talk about expectations. There's a lot of things that we're expecting to happen that is not happening. Things are changing and have changed so uh, quickly or, or we, we expect them to. And it was pointed out to me, well, that's what we were going to talk about anyway. And so uh, with that thought in mind, let me share with you just briefly uh, what the message was going to be about and uh, kind of do that in a very concise manner and then switch just a bit, kind of pivot and take a turn and talk to you about how that might relate to the circumstances that we find ourselves uh, today. Now, the first thing is uh, when it comes to giving up expectations, uh, and anybody that knows this, that if you've ever spent any time in marriage counseling for any great length of time, or, or if uh, you've ever spent time in recovery, uh, you know that expectations 
uh, especially, especially communications or expectations rather that are, have not been communicated and that have not been agreed to uh, is uh, a great way for you to lose your peace and happiness in your life. Uh, expectations can be incredibly problematic. And as a matter of fact, uh, the re- where this comes from, this, uh, this message, in fact, all the messages in this series come from this idea that's pretty famous of like 10 things that you need to give up to be happier. And a uh, part of that list is always expectations. Listen, non-communicated, unagreed to expectations is the greatest source of conflict in any relationship. I'm going to say that again. Non-communicated, unagreed to expectations are the greatest source of conflict in any relationship. Whether we're talking about a husband or wife, we're talking about uh, parents to children, uh, we're talking about pastor to congregation to, or friends with one another. Uh, when we have expectations that we put on other people and we haven't communicated that, and, and let alone agreed to it, uh, can cause immediate friction, immediate tension in that relationship. It's one of those things that can make us actually sick, emotionally speaking. Uh, it can fill us with angerness and, and bitterness and frustration and fear and hurt and tend to do so on a regular basis because we have these expectations of, of what other people should do or think or say as it re- with regard to their interactions with us, and they're not doing it. And, and oftentimes we make it personal. It's, it's, well, why aren't they doing it? Why They know they should do this for me. Uh, you know, or, or, or in our relationship uh, with other people, it's other people putting expectations upon us. And sometimes they've communicated them. Oftentimes they don't. Uh, but the real problem is when they haven't been agreed to. Someone has an expectation for you. They expect you to be a certain way. They may have not even told you. Maybe they, they have. But the thing is you haven't agreed to it. That can cause immediate conflict in the relationship. Now, um, this is the thing. When, when non-communicated, unagreed to expectations, uh, is what that is, is essentially, it, it's a promise that we're making to ourselves on behalf of others. That's really the bottom line, is, is that we, we are making a promise. If I have an expectation of, some, uh, of someone, what I'm really doing is making a promise to myself on their behalf. And oftentimes, I don't talk to them about that, let alone get them to agree to it. You can see how that becomes problematic. And the same thing is true for someone else when they put an expectation on you. Right? It, it, it's, it's a self-promise. They're promising them, themselves something on your behalf. That's their expectation. And the problem is if they haven't communicated that to you or, gotten, or, or allowed you the chance to agree or disagree, there's going to be a lot of problems. Now, we have expectations for all sorts of things. It's, it's uh, part of the way life works. It's part of how we think and we operate. And, and most of the time, it, it's not a problem. Uh, but, but then sometimes it becomes very big problems. Um, it, it, w- when we put expectations on, on outcomes and especially people, it's normally our attempt to try to control. Um, sometimes it's out of uh, lack of trust and faith in God. But I think most often it has to do with the fact that we just want things to be better. And, and we really don't trust for things to work out on their own. Or, or, and a lot of times we don't trust other people. But we feel like if we're in control, if we're in charge then we have a better chance of being happy, of things working out. And so that's where those expectations come in. We expect this to happen and this to happen and this person to be this way and this person to say that. And, and it sets us up for a lot of disappointment. So what's the answer? Well, the answer is found in reducing and sometimes eliminating our expectations. Thus, the sermon series. We're in this sermon series that, that we had planned. It's called, you know, what are you giving up? Give up something that matters. You know, oftentimes in Lent, it's, it's uh, you know, people give up all sorts of things. But what, what about giving up something that really makes a difference? And so the idea here originally was giving up some of these expectations. You know, reducing them or, all, or, or uh, maybe completely giving them up. And, and maybe it's not a, an expectation that you can give up readily. Or, but, but how about you talk about them? How about you communicate that expectation to that person and give them a chance to agree with it or disagree with it? You know, what's really interesting is that sometimes uh, these expectations that cause such great conflict in any relationship, at the same time, given the right spirit, they can be great bonding moments, 
wonderful times of bonding where, in fact, you share with someone uh, this unspoken expectation that you have of them or they do for you, and it gives you a chance to, to talk that through. And if both people are listened to and they both feel valued in the midst of it, it, what could have been an argument, what could have been a friction point in that relationship becomes actually a deep bonding moment. And that's ultimately what we're looking uh, for in our relationships and, and what ultimately what we're risking, what we're risking in these unspoken, unagreed to expectations is uh, intimacy. We're risking uh, lack of trust and broken uh, intimacy in those relationships as we fail one another in, in these expectations that we've placed upon others or that they've placed upon us, and yet we've really not talked about them or perhaps not agreed to them, even if we have spoken about them a bit. Okay, so where do we go from there? Well, it's interesting. I did want to mention just briefly um, that um, I really enjoy our scripture passage that we read today. I'm going to speak more about it here in a few moments. But, you know, it's, in that passage, Jesus' mother and brothers have an expectation for him. And he says no. He does not meet their expectation. Uh, and that just gives us just a moment, just right then and there, to say that sometimes um, our expectations shouldn't be met. Um, sometimes our expectations are unfair, are unrealistic, or maybe in the, in the case of our scripture, maybe they're just misplaced. Um, and so giving up expectations is a good, healthy process uh, that we could consider here in Lent. So what I want to do right here is actually finish this first part of the sermon uh, because this is a, essentially where the original sermon was meant to go. And um, uh, what I want to do here is to say that essentially uh, the expectations that we have is, uh, for others, it's kind of like living in um, shoulda, woulda, coulda land. And, uh, you know, I mentioned in the church a few weeks ago that those words always and never uh, keep counselors in business. And that's true. And if that was like the top thing, and, and if there's a second thing that keep counselors in business, it's the sense of expectations that we have for others, especially when we don't communicate them or get agreement with them. Uh, we go about thinking that they could have done this, that they should have done this, or if they would have done this, uh, that sort of thing. And, or, or others have that kind of attitude with us, and it becomes pr incredibly problematic. Um, but here's the scriptural advice for you. The scriptural advice is to be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. You know, it, our expectations of other people and they of us, especially when we haven't talked about them or we've gotten clear agreement with them, can ruin our own peace and joy, can make us very prickly people to be around, and beyond that, again, can potentially ruin the trust and intimacy that we so desperately need in our relationships, and that's what we crave. And, and, and so as we kind of, again, finish this part of this early part of the sermon, that's kind of the advice that we leave with, is the sense that, you know, maybe some expectations should go away completely. We just give them up. Others, we need to spend time communicating them and talking about them. Or when others come to us and we sense, in the, you know, that the, the, that's what's happening here, the argument that's happening, the, fr the friction point, it, it's about an expectation maybe they have of us that we haven't met, but yet we didn't even know about that expectation, let alone agree to it. That's the scriptural advice I'd, I want to give you today is be completely humble and gentle with one another. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. All right, so at this point I want to pivot. Uh, that seemed like kind of a fast-paced uh, part of an early sermon because I, that was really the entire message uh, or where I wanted to take the entire message a few weeks ago. But now it's important that we pivot. We are living in a very uh, strange time, and expectations are talked about or thought about, I think, in a bit different ways. It's not uh, no longer just about relationships or uh, what might be considered normal, everyday expectations. You know, I'm thinking about seniors right now, uh, seniors in high school, that uh, they're concerned, you know, what, what's, what's the final few weeks of their senior year look like? And I don't think that that's an unreasonable expectation to imagine going to prom, imagine the sports 
baseball and soccer and softball and, and track and, and the rest. And, and that, that seemingly has gone away, at least for now, and, and may be gone away for the rest of the year. Uh, going to prom, uh, uh, graduation ceremonies, uh, just finishing out the class, your classes with your friends, um, having an open house. I mean, all these things are kind of up in the air, and, and that's, that's tremendously disturbing and upsetting because these are expectations that are very normal and completely understandable. Uh, I think about college graduates in a similar way. It's a bit different, of course, for them, but I think of them. I, I think of those, again, in the service industry that, uh, or, or just others that find themselves all of a sudden being unemployed and uh, the kind of expectations they had to just go to work, work hard, make money, and take the next step in life. And now that's radically different. I think of uh, those uh, that are in the medical uh, profession. I think of uh, the doctor. I read a story um, about a doctor this week that uh, he and his wife are actually both uh, physicians, and, and uh, they had just had a baby, and, and he's not getting to hold his newborn baby. Um, she was actually telling the story. Uh, here he is working with patients, many of whom might, you know, be infected with the COVID-19 virus. And, and so he's got to self-quarantine. He comes home and he, he basically is living in the garage for now in order to protect his wife and protect his newborn. Uh, you know, I, I think about the other medical professionals that right now are, are working 12 and 13 hours days and, and may not have the equipment they need. You know, so there's all sorts of expectations that I think all of us would agree are normal, understandable, um, and yet we're in a place and a time where they may not be met. Those expectations may not be fulfilled. And what do we do with that? I I think of the teachers who, uh, in an amazing fashion, within the span of 48 hours, changed their curriculum, changed their, uh, you know, the whole way they were going about teaching. And here are people that uh, have given their lives to physically be in the presence of kids and help them and now have been handcuffed to some degree or, or maybe to a great degree in how to help and guide children in the ways of learning that, that they've given themselves to. And, and yet they're doing the very best that they can. And I'm thinking about those expectations and their frustrations and, and a whole host of other things as well. I, I think of my own personal uh, life, and, which is nothing compared to... Um, what the other folks are facing right now, but but you know, in my own personal life, I I've written a number of goals down for this year. I, I try to do this every year. I'm jotting down some personal goals, spiritual goals um, that I have, and then also writing down goals as, for the church, uh, things that I believe that God is calling me to do and lead in the way the, of the congregation that I'm uh, the senior pastor of. And and you know, right now, I mean, I, I'm still hoping, hopeful, and I'm still going to be working towards it. But all this has affected that, and, and I'm going to have to reevaluate and adjust. And, you know, there's some expectations that, that might not be met now and some disappointment and some frustration along with it. I mean, hey, you know, I, I was excited the other day to still be going to my gym. And, uh, you know, since I've been at Ringgold, I've struggled being able to go and have exercise and be fit. And, and I'm finally back in the habit. I've done really well. And I got word last night, my gym's closing, right? So, you know, just, that's just incredibly minor compared to the inc- you know, much more difficult things that I mentioned earlier. But the whole point is we're living in a time now where expectations must change. You know, whatever we expected March to be in 2020, whatever we expected perhaps April to be in 2020, more than likely those expectations won't be met. So what now? How do we stay mentally, emotionally healthy even as we're changing life in order to stay physically healthy? And where does our spirituality come in? In Isaiah 26, verse 3, we read, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Those who are you know, rooted and grounded in you. You'll keep in perfect peace. I want to keep that in mind as we uh, go back and again look at uh, 
the scripture we read this morning, this incredible passage from Mark, which is um, interesting and challenging. It's, it's unique to Mark. Mark tells us, uh, again, that Jesus' family show up in the midst of him doing ministry and mission, and that he's so busy, he had, uh, Jesus has hardly time to eat. And, 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 and it's interesting because uh, the, the scripture reads that when his family heard that all this was they try to take him away, and they say he is out of his mind. You talk about failed expectations. You know, they have a way of imagining what life would be. They had expectations for what Jesus would be and do for them, for as a family member in their household. And none of those things are being met. Definitely a disagreement there. And they want to talk to him about this. And this is interesting. Think about the first part of the sermon about how you know, most of the time the problem is that we don't communicate or, or maybe we don't agree to. And, and so here they, they try to take action. and They have these expectations and they're going to talk to Jesus. They, they want to get word to him. They want to talk this out. And his response is, well, no. <laughs> no, he's not going to talk about it. He's not going to meet those expectations. So Jesus' response is to ignore their expectations. Um, sometimes expectations should be ignored. And uh, that's a good lesson and one to explore another time. But today I thought I would invite you before we too quickly jump to where Jesus is and how he gives us the answers, I invite you to be part of the frustrations of Jesus' mom and his brothers or sisters if they also happen to be there, if he, if he had them, we're, we, we don't know to invite you into their frustrations as one who, though connected with Jesus, are nonetheless frustrated by the fact that their, what they would consider normal, reasonable expectations are not being met. I want to invite you to join them in their shock, in their disappointment. Why don't we pause and join them? Because we too are in a time before things work out. You know, we can can look and see how... uh, the, the mother of Jesus, Mary, goes on you know, and, and becomes one of the disciples. Uh, she's in the upper room uh, at the birth of the church. In fact, many people believe that she is the source of Luke or the source of Luke's source behind some of the unique material that we have in Luke's account of the gospel. Um, James, his brother, the one that's named, that we know of is named James, is said to have gone on and become the, um, the pastor of uh, the first church in Jerusalem, Jerusalem the, the first church of first churches. Uh, and presumably this is true of the rest of his siblings. Um, and so things work out. But, but I want to invite you into this time, in this moment, before things work out, just in their frustration and in their hurt, I'm imagining, about Jesus not meeting the expectations. You know, just because we're connected to Jesus doesn't mean our expect- expectations will be met spirituality and life for that matter is easy when our expectations are being met but what do we do in those times when we relate to jesus's mother and his brothers here in this passage come on jesus fix this come on do this change this change that this isn't how we imagined life to be with you and jesus responds to us with the same no (laughs) and he probably goes on and tells us something very important and some sort of eternal spiritual truth which he does here in this passage as well but but we like them are probably not ready to hear it because we're too busy stuck with the fact that what we thought life would be whatever our expectation is is not being met and so I invite you, I invite you in the days ahead and the weeks ahead to just embrace, embrace this wilderness experience that we talked about last week, this land of, of before when all things work out, right? Before things get better. You know, we always want to jump to the end of the story. We want to say, okay, when, when does everything, when, when does the happily ever after come? Well, we need to stay here in this moment before things get better. And that's where we are today. We're so, and that's hard for us because we're used to instant results and immediate gratification. And we, don't, we literally don't know what to do with ourselves. <laughs> we're, we're not sure. We're, we, we just want our problem solved. We just want to move beyond this. We want to just get through the, the, the ick of it, the, the, the problems of it. And the, and the real problem is we're not so sure when that's going to happen. So what do we do? Judy Pace Christie, who is an author and and a journalist, 
She wrote, when you begin to be willing, when you begin to be willing to give up something, uh, even if that something means a lot to you, then you become open for something even more meaningful. And even before it happens, even before it happens, your life becomes more enjoyable. Let me ask you, are you open to spiritual things? It's so hard when we're so full of disappointment with, or just our frustration of how life is because it's nothing like we expected it to be. It's very difficult for us to be open to the moment of what could happen now. Are you open to God? I'm not talking about doing God's stuff, although that's great. And a lot of times I'm encouraging you to do God's stuff. But right now, much of what we might tell you to do that's God's stuff, you can't do. And so instead, all you can do is be open to God. Are you open to this in this time of failed expectations, in this time of real sadness and potential loss, this time of great concern over the health of our loved ones or maybe ourselves, the people we care about, maybe concerns over the economy and what will life be after corona, the coronavirus? Uh, Are you nonetheless open to the possibility of a real God interacting with you right now, even in this moment, maybe even intervening on our behalf? I mean, some of us can talk a lot about God, but when we're in a time of isolation like this, well, then we figure out whether or not we're actually walking with God. It's one thing to talk about God. It's another thing to walk with God. And, you know, that's why there is a wilderness. That's why there are such a thing as spiritual retreats. That's why these biblical characters at times go off by themselves. There's nothing like isolation to help reveal just how spiritual we really are. And I want you to embrace that and not to back away from it, not to be afraid of it, to use and embrace your spirituality or your lack of it. To be open to the possibility, the positive potential of any moment right here in the in-between times, in the time of before things get better, for the possibility of a God moment, a precious moment, a valuable, meaningful moment, regardless of what your expectations might have been before, before now. Now, being open to God can feel awkward Uh, it's strange because we are so used to just going, 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 and we haven't trained ourselves to to really uh, focus in on more of the inward disciplines and the quietness of the soul. But it's incredible and and important for us to be open to God uh, and and to work through that awkwardness, that sense of, wait a minute, is this even right? Am Am I missing something? You know, any spiritual thing is an abstract thing. Therefore, by virtue, it is spiritual. Nonetheless, you can recognize the movement of Christ in your life, the movement of God in your life. This is what we Christians believe. By virtue, the, the, the Spirit, the Spirit is, it, remind, it sounds like Jesus. It feels like Jesus. And so it's so, that much more important that we read the gospel accounts, that we study uh, the Scripture together, because we'll recognize the Spirit. Even in moments like this, when we, we have so many mixed emotions, and, and we're, we may be going stir-crazy with our isolation, and, and we're so used to being doers, and yet, nonetheless, if we're open to the possibility that any moment could be a God moment, the Spirit could speak to us, even now, in a powerful, amazing way. I thought I would share with you this final scripture from Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 7 and 8. It says, Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. It leaves, its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. I discovered the powerful imagery of Jeremiah, that passage from Jeremiah, about three or four years ago. I'd read it quite a few times before then. But when I was leading a Bible study called Christian to the Core and really reflecting on how deep does my faith go, and and we reflected upon that central passage as the overarching metaphor for that study, it it became a powerful image to me that though heat and drought are realities of life, disruptions are actually things to be expected. And though we hate it, even as an unprecedented time is now, failed expectations are our reality, even ones as big as the ones we face now. Yet it doesn't mean that we can't or shouldn't 
be sad about those. We, we can embrace our feelings. We, we can be, admit our disappointment and our frustration. That, that's fine. We don't have to glance over and just say, well, have faith. No, that's not what this is about. It, but it means that while we're waiting for things to get better, while we're in this moment of the not yet time, we're in the middle of it, nonetheless, we can be rooted and grounded in such a way that we still have life and there's still fruit even in the midst of the heat in the midst of the drought blessed is the one who trusts in the lord whose confidence is in him they'll be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream it does not fear when heat comes its leaves are always green it has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit each day god gives you an opportunity for you to entrust your life to him, to practically seek God, and to utilize that trust every single day, regardless of the circumstance. And when we're open to God, God can take us in a radically different direction, wherever we may be. For just that moment, in just that moment, to help us enjoy the moment more, or to be at peace at the moment, even when we're going through a particularly disturbing time, or sometimes God will use those moments to take our life in a dramatically different direction. What about giving up some expectations, even ones that are reasonable and understandable, even ones that you're still disappointed in and hurt by and saddened? That's okay. But what if you begin right now to let go of them just, just a little and recognize that though those expectations might not be met, Yet with God, the possibility of God's Spirit in your life, even in a time such as this, perhaps there still can be fruit, perhaps still amazing God moments are possible, even before we get to that time where we look back and we see how we've come through it, and it's all better now. Even now, before then, great God moments. What about giving up those expectations? Jesus, this just seems craziness to us. Don't you care? Don't you care? Can't you just fix this? Why why don't you come out and talk to us, Jesus? And Jesus' response, no, not going to do that. But you keep focused on doing and being in the will of God, and it's going to work out. Let's pray together. God, you know the lives we live, woven so strangely of purpose and of chance. Lives of things that are completely reasonable and of things that are at times seemingly irrational. There are expectations that we have, expectations that we've held some of us for years that right now it seems like those are vanishing before our eyes. Some of us are filled with, or fight being filled with anxiety because we fear that our expectations for whatever may not come to fruition. And yet, Lord, nothing is beyond your redeeming. Through your grace, through the power of your Holy Spirit, You can do far more than we could ever ask, think, or even imagine. And so now, here in this time, before things are already better, in this moment of disappointment, of expectations not being met, right here, Lord, in this time, in this moment, fulfill your purpose in us and in this church as we open ourselves up to God moments each day however they may come. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. While we do His good will, 
will he abide with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief or a loss, not a frown or a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Well, now it's time in our worship experience today to present our tithes and our offerings back to God. And uh, we remember that uh, as Christians, we give uh, not because we are paying for some service or some product, but we give because uh, that's what God calls us to. And so I thank each and every one out there that is uh, considering a gift, an offering, or sending in your tithe to Ringgold United Methodist Church. Um, we don't take that for granted, certainly not in these times. And so if you want to go online and make that gift there, uh, or if you want to send it in again to, uh, uh, through the mail, it's P.O. Box 99. Um, we are grateful and know that that's going to continue the work, mission, and ministry of Christ here in the weeks and months ahead, and also as we support other uh, things in our community and around this world. We, we appreciate you taking the time and honoring God and, and making this part of your worship experience, uh, as well as the singing and preaching and everything else. So let's take a moment and, and pray about that. Lord, we thank you for your guiding presence in our lives. And we ask that you would bless this giving of your tithes and our offerings. Help it to be spiritual, God, even if we are giving online and that seems just so foreign to us. Or whether it requires us mailing in a check rather than putting it into a physical offering basket. Nonetheless, Lord, help us to recognize the spirituality that is here. That we offer up a portion of what you've provided to us. That we offer it back to you with no strings attached and how that's worshipful. And that we trust you with it and we give it to you and we say, Lord, do with this as you please. We are so thankful that you're in our lives, that you're in our lives. Now take this, Lord, and in some way help other people recognize the good news, which is you, Jesus, your presence. Thank you. Bless this offering this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, 
As we conclude worship here, there are a couple of connection points that I want to make you aware of. First of all, uh, we are an online church in so many ways, and so we want to stay in contact with you in this time. An important step for you to take this week would be to contact our office to make sure that we have the correct information for you. So email karen at ringoldumc.org. Maybe make sure that she has your correct email address, your correct phone number, and maybe even your correct physical address as well. Since we can't gather in person, it's important for us to stay connected through these other means. Secondly, we want to draw your attention to a special new section of our website called Online Church. What we've said in this time is that we are an online church in this interim. So if you will go to our website, ringoldumc.org, and if you will click on the section that says Online Church, you'll see a lot of resources there that will help you stay in the loop with what's going on in this wilderness interim kind of period. I especially want to draw your attention to the resources that we have from Britta, our children's director, and also from Kirsten, our youth director. So please check those out. And then finally, we want to make you aware of an important event coming up this Wednesday as we host a blood drive here at Ringgold United Methodist Church in the front parking lot right off of Nashville Street. We realized in this time that a lot of people are wanting to give back and to help, and what better way to give than to give blood and help to support those that are in need in this particular kind of way. So from 11 o'clock in the morning until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the blood mobile from Blood Assurance will be out in our parking lot seeing patients. What you're going to need to do is to pre-register online first on our website, ringoldumc.org. Click on the link for the blood drive. Again, these are just a few of our connection points here at Ringgold United Methodist Church for this week. We want to encourage you to follow us on Facebook or Instagram and also to be checking out our website for more information and incredible ways to connect here in this time. God bless you. So friends, look for those God moments, even as our expectations may not be met. Look for what God will do anyway. And even in this time of isolation, of wilderness, and this strange place that we find ourselves in, may we still do things that only followers of Jesus would do. Amen.